Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to the SME's A Day in the Life webinar uh, series brought to you by Engineers for Engineers. I'm uh, Rani Haroon and your host for today's webinar. Uh, I hope you're all staying safe uh, wherever you are. And for those who uh, that are attending our event for the first time, what is the purpose of this webinar? And what is the Day in the Life webinar series all about? You probably wondered at some point what a day in the life of a mechanical engineer working at top companies like uh, Tesla, SpaceX, Raytheon, or Medtronic would be like. Now you have the chance to find out through this interactive uh, webinar. In a minute or so, uh, I will introduce our special guest speaker uh, of today's webinar. But first, let me tell you how this webinar will work. Starting with some uh, housekeeping, all webinar participants are signing in listen mode only. So please type in any questions you might have in the dialog box on the webinar platform anytime during the webinar. All questions will be answered after the introduction of our guest speaker. Uh, in fact, the Q&A session will be an integral part of this webinar. You may ask any kind of uh, questions, whether it's related to the mechanical, mechanical engineering field, uh, the company, the industry, career related questions, or any questions related to the speaker's uh, job or position. So for those uh, who are not familiar with the, how YouTube Live works, uh, this is where you can type in uh, your questions. Simply type them in the chat box in your YouTube control panel as shown here. Uh, and uh, we'll probably get a lot of questions. So we'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can. So let's get started uh, and introduce you to our guest speaker. Uh, please meet Amanda Tong, a uh, research and development engineer at Medtronic. Amanda, uh, you have the stage now. Uh, I'll ask you to please uh, tell us your story and give us uh, uh, an introduction. Okay, thanks Ronnie for that intro. Hi everyone, I'm Amanda. I'm an R&D engineer here at Medtronic Spine in Memphis, Tennessee. I've been with the company for about three years um, and day to day, uh, my job entails working on or developing devices to treat various spinal pathologies, including pediatric scoliosis and cervical stenosis. Um, I'm originally from Huntington Beach, California. I, and I graduated in 2017 from Case Western Reserve University, which may ring a bell after yesterday's debate. Um, as a student, I did various internships and co-ops at orthopedics companies and other medical device companies. Outside of work, I, I volunteer with the local chapter of Society of Women Engineers and enjoy exploring the local parks with my doc. I want to thank ASME and Medtronic for this opportunity and I, I look forward to hearing all your questions. Thank you, uh, Amanda. So let me uh, get started. I'm sure we'll get, uh, we're actually getting already a lot of questions from the, the, uh, from the chat here. But uh, let me ask, um, asking you that first question, which is essentially, what is your typical day? Uh, what is the typical uh, day look like at the Metron? Yeah, so I'm actually calling from the office. Um, we've slowly been getting back in. Um, these days, it's it's a lot of you know looking at different prototypes that we've worked on, testing them, um, and then getting ready for different labs and calls with surgeons. Um, so I've actually over the past couple of weeks, I've done a series of, of cadaver labs, assessing our different prototypes, um, and these are these are usually you know, instruments or various implants um, that we're designing for these different spinal pathologies. Um, so it's it's really a mix, you know. There's days where I'm just sitting at my desk doing a lot of CAD work, or I'm either in the workshop or the lab, building stuff, breaking stuff, and you know, getting, getting ready to meet with our surgeons. As a mechanical engineer, what uh, drew uh, you uh, towards medical, medical engineering? Yeah, so back in high school, I, I was always really into physics and science, um, but I also liked being creative. I was actually a musician, so, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of do something that was technical, but also creative. 
Um, I was also at the time really interested in learning about animals. So I was still looking for, for what I would major in in college. And I ended up watching this movie called Dolphin Tale. For, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's, it's about Winter, a dolphin at the Clearwater Aquarium in Florida. Um, she lost her tail after getting caught in a fishing net. And in the end, they, give, they ended up giving her a prosthetic tail. So I thought, cool, animal prosthetics. That seems really interesting. Um, what fields are out there that, that I can pursue to, to work on something like that? And so that's how I found biomedical um, and mechanical engineering at Case and just started taking all sorts of classes and working on different projects um, in, that, in that world. So that's kind of my origin story, if you will. <laughs> Great, thank you, uh, Amanda. And what is your favorite part of uh, your job? As I mentioned before, I really like working with my hands. I like you know, seeing the parts that I've developed in CAD and bringing them to life. Uh, we do a lot of you know, plastic parts. It's always good to get that feedback um, before working with a machinist and making it in metal. So I really enjoy the building aspect of it. I enjoy testing these parts out in cadaveric specimens, getting that surgeon feedback and seeing everything come to life. And what do you find uh, today most challenging, if, uh, if anything? So these days, as, as most of you are probably living and, and we're all in a virtual world, um, and so it's been, a, been a, a challenge to, to try and keep engaged with our customers and get that critical feedback on our designs. Um, so we've been doing a variety of virtual hybrid labs where we'll bring in surgeons or at least a surgeon into the lab and then the rest of the surgeon team will call in and watch that surgeon go through everything in the cadaver. Um, so that's, it's been a challenge, but I think we've overcome it. We've done a lot of planning up front to make sure these, these labs are a success and we're still able to move our projects forward and keep chugging along. Okay, but, but prior to the pandemic, was there anything uh, in particular that you uh, that you found challenging um, in your in your job? Sorry, can you repeat that question? Was it prior, prior to the pandemic? Yeah, was there anything in particular uh, about your job that you found uh, challenging? Yeah, I'd say so. I'm on multiple projects, um, and so. I think learning how to juggle all that, you know, you're, you only have so many hours in a day. Um, so figuring out where to prioritize, learning that you can't do everything. Um, there's a lot of, aside from the technical aspects of my job, there's, there's a lot of logistics as well. Like I mentioned, planning labs, um, working with the different cross functions, you know, marketing, quality, et cetera. Um, so I think for me, that's been a, a good learning opportunity, really pushing me to manage the three projects I'm on and, you know, still, um, yeah, keep things going. Okay. And uh, so you mentioned uh, using additive manufacturing and I know that we have uh, mountains here that's very uh, eager to learn uh, about additive manufacturing, how it's applied. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, how it's uh, being used, if you can? Yeah, so we use just in prototyping, we do a lot of SLAs of, of designs that we come up with. Um, we also have products that are 3D printed. Um, there are these inner body devices um, that go in between the vertebral body, and those are made of 3D printed titanium. And so we have various shops on campus with you know, big machines printing these out. Um, so it's, it's a part of the development process, but it's also you know, part of you know, the products that we're actually putting out there for our, for our patients. Okay, great, thank you. Um, what is uh, your advice to mechanical engineers who are listening to uh, listening in today? Uh, what would be your advice to, uh, pre to help them prepare for a job at, uh, at Medtronic, for example? Good question. So I'd say getting the opportunities to intern, to co-op, I know that kind of looks different these days, but anytime you can get that, that hands-on experience, whether it's in a lab or at a company, um, that really, that'll get, really help you get your foot in the door at, at a company like Medtronic. Um, and even in, in my coursework, I, I was involved with a lot of design projects. So you can just getting that experience 
having to develop something you know, within a certain timeline, working with different people, juggling different priorities. I'd say that that's really a key. Um, and really, it's not just technical. There's also a lot of, as I alluded to, lots of just the project management side of things. You're having to answer to, to different individuals and work with different projects. And so it's, it's, a, whole, it's a whole set of skills that you need to, to bring to the to table. Okay. Is there any particular, I would say, skills or course that you took uh, while you were a student that uh, um, you're almost applying in, you know, every day at your job today? Yeah, so at Case, uh, we had a really great design and manufacturing course that you could start taking your freshman or sophomore year. So it started out with learning about the different manufacturing processes and learning how to do CAD and actually getting into the machine shop and building a part. So we got kind of that intro. And then the next series, the next class in that series was taking those skills and working on a team, coming up with a project timeline, developing a product, and again, using those CAD and machining skills that you picked up in that first class. And then the last class was kind of the culmination, if you will, where we all worked on and designed a motorcycle engine. And this was just a conceptual design, but it was it was a semester long project, 10 to 11 plus people teams, um, really a crash course and kind of what I'm seeing day to day here in my job. Um, so that was a really, really just great sneak peek um, of what I do every day here in Medtronic. Okay, uh, follow up questions uh, from uh, Joseph here from the audience. What did you do during your time at um, Case Western that helped you stand out as a candidate for the job? Yeah, so outside of my, my coursework, I, there's lots of hours put into to studying and going into the lab. Um, I also was involved uh, in different organizations on campus from uh, BMES, SWE, and just being a part of those, those leadership teams, helping to coordinate events, you know, just putting in my time to volunteer. And through that, I, I met a lot of people um, who worked at different companies and kind of just, you know, started networking through that. Um, yeah, so it was really just not just focusing on academics, but also taking advantage of all the opportunities that Case had to offer, especially those hands-on opportunities. Um, and I, I did one thing I think that really helped me figure out what I want to do after college was my co-op. Um, that Case has a pretty good co-op program that you can start participating in your, I believe your sophomore year. So I did two co-ops, um, one at Phillips Healthcare as a, I think at the time I was a systems engineering co-op working on CT scanners. And then the, the following co-op, I was a biomechanics uh, co-op at a small orthopedics company called, called Arthrex. And so that, it was always just a nice way to apply what I learned in the classroom to what I was seeing in real life. And then also get a, get a taste and see if you know this is really what I want to do after college. So I'd say any any time you can get that internship co-op experience, it's super helpful. Yeah, great, thanks, uh, Amanda. Anything in particular that um, uh, drew you to uh, Medtronic, and uh, anything that's different uh, in terms of uh, um, I would say you know uh, given the fact that uh, there are other companies out there that have a similar product or mission. Anything in particular that stood out um, as far as Medtronic goes? So uh, during my time at Case, I heard about Medtronic. I mean, it's it's got such a presence in the medical device industry. Um, and as, as I was getting ready to graduate, I, I knew I wanted to do, I wanted to work in product development in the orthopedics industry. Um, so I actually, I, I didn't at the time realize that Medtronic did orthopedics for spine. I might have heard about them through, you know, they're, they're more the cardiac products, and whatnot. Um, so actually I attended the career fair at the Society of Women Engineers Conference. And that's how I found out about the spine division and everything just about using CAD, working with surgeons and you know, making things that just, that was what I wanted to do. And then Medtronic in particular is just such a mission driven company. Um, I mean, to this day, since our founder, Earl Bakken, put together the mission statement, it's, it's something that, you know, we 
it's instilled in us. I mean, as, as a new employee, I came in and we had a little medallion that reminded us of, of, of our mission. It's, and that was just, that really resonated with me, really how, how patient focused we are, um, you know, doing what we can to help folks out there. So that I'd say the technical opportunities and, and the mission really, really um, attracted me to Medtronic. Great. And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the uh, interview process, what it was like? Yeah, so my, my experience is probably a little more unconventional. As I mentioned, I, I found out about the opportunity at the SWE conference. And so I actually did all my interviews there um, prior to getting the offer. Um, I think I was kind of at the beginning of, of an internal push to do more of those kind of on the spot um, hires at these big conferences that they have every year. So I met the hiring manager there and then talked to some individuals on his team at the time, just to kind of get a different taste of, you know, what it was like to live in Memphis or just more kind of the day-to-day -day side of things. And so I think I interviewed, it was either a Thursday or Friday and got my offer the following Monday. So it was a really quick process. And then I had the chance to come out here to Memphis to actually to visit, see, see what the city had to offer, visit the, visit the site itself and meet other people on the team. Um, so it was a, a pretty interesting and streamlined process. Okay, thank you. And what do you think um, Medtronic is looking for in a mechanical engineer? What would be the, uh, the ideal candidate if there is, if there is such? Yes. Such so for what I do, which is product development, I'd say they're looking for, you know, strong mechanical engineering background. Again, that hands-on opportunity or hands-on experience designing, uh, whether it's in school or at previous internships, previous CAD experience also helps. Um, even outside of that, that, you know, if you're, you have personal projects, woodworking or whatever, just showing that passion for, for mechanical engineering, I think really, really is a big plus. Um, and then again, as I mentioned, the, the soft skills, you, you know, you have to be able to collaborate with different functions, as, as we say, um, juggle a lot of different timelines um, and, and communicate to different audiences as well. I, I know I have to constantly keep that in mind, you know, how you speak with the internal team for, with versus surgeons or patients, it's all, it's, it's something you have to kind of adjust to. Um, and so that I got a lot of experience in that in my, you know, we had to do a lot of presentations in school. So getting used to that, that is, is really helpful as, as well. Uh, what is the, uh, can you tell us about the work-life uh, balance and uh, the culture, the work culture there? Yeah. So I'd say at least in Medtronic Spine, it's, I mean, I think there's a overall, a, a they're very supportive of, you know, maintaining that balance. Um, you know, there are times, yes, we have to work on weekends, especially now as we're doing more of these virtual calls. Um, but I'd say I, I don't, you know, I feel like I'm able to take time off. I mean, Medtronic does offer pretty good um, vacation benefits. Um, you know, that you need that time to recharge, especially after, you know, a couple of weeks of lots of labs and meetings. Um, so I'd, I'd say overall there's, there's, I'm able to maintain a pretty good work life balance. Okay, great. A uh, question from uh, Rachel here. As far as uh, you mentioned earlier, interacting with surgeons, um, she was just wondering how often uh, do you interact with, uh, with the users of, uh, of your product? Yeah, good question. So these are pretty regularly. So it, it depends on the phase that the project's in, but pretty much no matter the phase, you're, you're going to have surgeon touch points. Um, so I'm on a couple projects. They're kind of earlier in the design phase. Um, so we're doing, we're having a lot of meetings with surgeons as we're developing concepts and prototypes. Uh, we're engaging them, getting them, getting feedback from them earlier on. So there's time to make those changes uh, before the design's really frozen and you have to really start testing it um, and putting together your all the documentation. Um, so if I just look at the last month, I probably have been engaging with surgeons probably two to three times a week, whether that's labs or training on our different systems, 
Um, there's also a lot of it has been um, video chats or video conferences, but there's also email as well. Um, so it's it's been a good mix um, and a good experience so far. Because I think pr probably prior to this year, I hadn't had as much of that surge engagement experience. So it's been it's been a really neat part of the job. Okay, thank you. Any uh, particular uh, project uh, that you've done in uh, your time in Medtronic that uh, was um, that you could share that was uh, so special, that was amazing, something that you really uh, enjoyed uh, doing? Yeah, so there's there's one project that I've been on since I started three years ago, and it's <laughs> very dear to my heart. It's it's actually it's a project um, uh, looking at treating pediatric scoliosis. So. I mean, my mantra on the project is I'm doing this literally for the children. So that always keeps me going, even on the tough days. But what's neat about that project, unfortunately, I can only say so much, but it, it would be it's it's a novel technique. It's something that's that hasn't been out there as much in the market. And so there's really a lot of room for, for innovation. Um, and so I've been on it. I came on kind of when a good part of the system was developed, um, but I still was able to kind of you know, stretch my design muscles. And now we're, we're at the point where we're, you know, we've got something out there. I'm engaging with surgeons, helping train them on something I got to work on. Um, and we actually did have a case probably a couple months ago. And so it was, it was just really rewarding to see that something I'd worked on, especially since, you know, three, three years ago as I came in that, that actually went into a patient and helped the patient. So that's, that's been very, very special. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you, Amanda. Um, looking for some um, advice, I think Katie was wondering, and I think you mentioned that a couple of times uh, earlier where uh, networking helped you a lot. Um, so just, uh, she was wondering what, uh, what advice you had as far as uh, networking, anything in particular that you do that you found very uh, effective? Yeah, so networking was definitely an acquired skill for me. Um, I I guess one, once I started thinking about it as more of a re relationship building, because I didn't, and just getting to hear what different people out there were doing, um, that's when I think I really got the most out of it, rather than thinking going into it and thinking, oh, I'm trying to get an internship out. It's like that. That's really not the best way to start. I, I think really just learning just all that's out there. Um, again, I, I didn't even know Medtronic had a spine division until I simply just went up to a booth and talked to people about what they do. And that, that just kind of got the wheels turning. Um, and there were, there were places where I just didn't expect to, it almost happened when I wasn't intentionally trying to network. That's actually when I met people and really had really great conversations. Um, and so, I'd say take advantage of your school's career fairs. Um, oh, anytime you get that face-to-face -face conversation, it's, it really does a lot. And again, I know in this day and age, it's, it's a little more difficult, um, but going to also the, I got a lot out of going to the national conferences because you're just even a greater range of companies that, that show up. And you're also talking to students from all over the country and who, who all do all sorts of things. So that that's always, or that was a favorite part of my, my time in college. It was just super inspiring to see what, what everyone's passionate about. Um, I also, through LinkedIn, I would do cold calls. I mean, I, so people I kind of had some connection to, but not really. And I would just send a message and say, hey, I, I looked, went through your profile. I thought what you did was really interesting. And um, if you're willing, I'd, I'd love to set up some time to chat and learn more about what you do. Um, so I guess just, not being afraid to, to reach out to anyone, everyone. Um, the, the worst they can say is no, but more often than not, um, people are willing willing to help. Yeah, and I think that's, uh, uh, you mentioned something very, uh, very interesting uh, that I think would help a lot of students who are listening to us today, or even professionals who always, um, you know, worry about um, reaching out to someone they don't know, or reaching out to a stranger. And I think you mentioned uh, basically shifting your mindset and looking at it as an opportunity to learn mm -hmm. from them, not as, um, you know, as someone who's reaching out to ask for a favor. 
you know. Exactly. So I think that's really, really uh, important. Um, thank you for thank you for that. Um, another question is uh, how steep. So I'm assuming that when you uh, joined Medtronic, you didn't have any um, um, healthcare, uh, bio, bio uh, technical, um, you know, bioengineering background. Uh, and it took you some some time to uh, learn certain things. So just wondering how steep uh, the learning curve in your field uh, is. Yeah, good question. So for me, I, it helped that I had previous backgrounds in the orthopedics industry, but again, that was more on the hip and knee side of things. And so it's fine, it's, it's, it's a whole other animal. It has its own you know, language, anatomy, um, but that, that didn't take too much to, I mean, too long or to really pick up. I mean, it's just, you immerse yourself and, and you learn it as you go. Um, we also had, um, anatomy training classes to, to help, help us, um, hit the ground running. I'll also say, so I, I don't think this is, this is probably more unique to my experience, but since I got my offer, it was in November, but I still had a semester to finish that case. I actually was able to start working remotely as kind of an intern, if you will, in my last semester, just to start, um, you know, dabbling, getting getting used to the CAD software. We use Creo here, so that was that was something I hadn't used before. Um, so it was good to have you know those first couple months to start learning that. You know, I started en engaging with folks on on the team, kind of day to day, understanding what what I would be doing in the office. And so by the time I started full time in July, I already, I had a feel, um, you know, for different softwares, different processes, and again, the people I would be working with day to day. So I was able to really hit the ground running. And again, that's, uh, that's unique to my experience. Um, but I think any chance you can get that kind of work out a lot more, more of the like logistics up front that that really helps with that learning curve. Um, and uh, one thing I really had to learn was, uh, I'm new to this, had to cut myself slack. And really, I, I'm lucky to work with, you know, a lot of folks who were willing to jump in, help mentor me and um, kind of get me up to speed. Um, so there are a lot of good resources and, and mentors to, to help ease that, that learning curve a little bit. Okay. And have you, uh, have you received any special training since you joined Medtronic and other like opportunities uh, to to take? Uh, I would say additional trainings if uh, if needed. Yep. So a lot of my job is, as I mentioned, is working in CAD, developing prints of our different concepts, and and sharing those with the manufacturers. So um, I. I've recently gone through GD&T training, um, geometric dimensioning tolerancing is what I believe it stands for. Um, so that's that's something I'd been exposed to in school. So at least I knew it existed, but um, really hadn't applied until I, I got got here. And so we had a, a week long training, um, learning how to apply that. Um, we also had one um, on tolerance stacks. And so kind of more, these are more technical trainings uh, we also every so often we'll have I essentially think like continuing education we have additional spinal pathology anatomy classes um, but really it's if there's something you're interested in something you want to really learn more about usually our organization our organization supportive of, of you know, either putting together a training or seeing what what's out there um, one of my colleagues actually put together a machining class for for our group and so we spent, I think it was about three to four days in a machine shop, learning how all the different, operate the different machines, mill, lathe, et cetera. And then we ended up making, um, I forget what we made, I'm blanking, but it was, it was nice to kind of start with the basics and then apply them and come out with something that you made with your bare hands. Okay. For the scoliosis uh, project and other projects, do the ideas uh, typically originate from uh, Medtronic or surgeons uh, or customer requests? Yeah, um, so it goes both ways. Um, there are some, it was something some surgeons were starting to, to pick up and learn and wanted to 
develop a system around. And so that's you know where we came in. It's it's usually a very collaborative approach. Um, so sorry, I'm trying to think about what I can and can't say, but okay. yeah, it's it's pretty collaborative. Um, you know, through a series of of different labs and meetings, you're trying to understand what the customer needs um, are, and then we take that and develop different requirements um, that we, you know, check our designs against uh, to make sure we're meeting them. Um, so it, it's a lot, we, we kind of have this phase, we call it, you know, I guess you say, you're collecting customer feedback, that's usually where you start. Um, and so, again, as I mentioned, you have labs, you have calls, um, just to kind of understand this, the state of the market and what's needed. So hopefully that answers your question a little bit. I'm happy to try and elaborate more if needed. Yeah, Jared, let, let us know if it answered your, <laughs> your question. Uh, another question uh, from Eddie Bayo. So how, how important it is to already know what division to work with. Uh, he's interested in a broad range of divisions. So neuro, cardio, mm -hmm. and a little bit of uh, spinal work. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's if you have multiple interests, I'd just start with you know, kind of looking at what opportunities are available in the at the company, because once you get your foot in the door, you know, it's a big company. There are lots of opportunities. Um, even my job, I, while it's primarily spine, I've had the chance to work with other individuals in different divisions, and we do have a lot of different kind of technical conferences where you get to network and meet other people. It's always good to have that knowledge transfer across the business units. Um, so again, I think it's more really getting that technical expertise and then being able to apply it to whatever, you know, division, um, you know, those skills are transferable. And, and then the more, you know, like the spine language or whatever that, that you can, you can pick up as you go. Okay, another question from the Rachel, um, do you have any recommendations for people who are going to conferences like SWE um, and how to prepare for them to stand out at the conference? Yeah, um, so I'd say it's, I'm trying to think back to what I did. So having a good, that, that elevator pitch, you know, that intro where you walk up to the recruiter, the HR individual at the booth or whoever's at the booth and you know, having that really polished, you know, what your name is, what your interests are, your major, you know, et cetera. Having that really um, polished is, is good to have. And then even before I get to the conference, I'd always research what companies were there. I'd make a game plan of which companies I was going, I would visit first and I would try and prioritize. So, Big companies like Medtronic usually get a lot of foot traffic. Um, so I strategically you know, go to those companies first, especially if I had a great interest in them. Um, because really those interview slots are, are filled in that this, those first couple of days. And so if there's, again, a really a company you're really interested in, I'd prioritize them. Um, you know, hopefully you can have a good conversation with someone there and you know, that, that gets you to an interview. Um, so thinking about, yeah, so doing your research ahead of time, having a good, a good elevator pitch. I also would have different resumes for the different companies, um, kind of just, again, customize it to different positions they're looking for. Um, so I often, I probably have, I don't know, five plus versions of my resume specific to, to each company I was really interested in. Um, what else? Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a marathon when you go to those things. Um, so I think definitely pausing to take breaks, you know, drink water, grab a granola bar like that, that I, I had to learn. Um, so it's hopefully those are some tips and tricks that can help you guys. No, that's really good. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Amanda. Uh, for product development in the med device industry, is it important to get your FE and PE. So in my experience for medical medical device companies, it's not as important. Um, I, I just have a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Um, but I'd say in other industries, you're looking more at like civil or 
other related fields, it's probably um, usually, I mean, usually they even look at it as kind of a minimum qualification. Um, and so I think usually they're looking at like your, for, to, for you to be an EIT. And then from there you work towards your PE. I don't know as much about that. So I'm sorry if I'm butchering anything. No, it's okay. But for what I do, it's, it's, not, it's not really necessary. Okay. Um, the another uh, advice uh, question. So is there anything in particular that you're doing today uh, just to keep you up to date with the, uh, with the industry? Because I'm, I'm assuming that bioengineering is evolving a lot. So is there any, uh, anything in particular you're doing to uh, keep you, yourself up, up to date? Yeah, and I'm assuming specifically about spine. Uh, about uh, uh, anything that helps you with, you know, with your job today. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'd say, well, with the spine stuff, since I live and breathe that, you know, I'm on lots. I subscribe to a lot of news alerts. Um, there are a lot of things like Fierce Medical and just all sorts of companies out there that put together kind of short and sweet highlights of big medical device news. We also internally have, we have something called the Knowledge Center and they put together some really nice summaries of, of news as well. And again, not just specific to spine, but really in the industry as a whole. Um, we have the opportunity, um, well, at least back in the day, we had the opportunity to go to different conferences. Um, that kind of, we have, you know, a series of spine conferences. There's usually different focuses. There's a scoliosis specific one. So that's a great opportunity to, to listen in on all the different papers that are being presented and engage with surgeons and just get kind of more of that clinical exposure, if you will. Um, i trying to think what else. Um, I, I have a Google alert for, you know, for the projects I'm working on. You know, Especially the scoliosis one, there's there's a lot of new developments on the on the techniques and competitive products out there. So I have a, a kind of a Google a Google Scholar alert on it, just in case any new papers pop up. Um, so yeah, it's it's really a mix of things. I mean, we're fortunate with with the internet to just have access to to this vast um, amount of knowledge. So okay, thank thank you, Amanda. Uh, going back to, um, I think, skills that um, you're using a lot or you would recommend for engineers uh, to, um, to, to acquire um, or to be proficient in, especially with the Medtronic or with the bioengineering um, industry. I know you kind of touched on that uh, a little bit earlier, but just uh, if you can reiterate and uh, uh, and uh, walk us through anything and any uh, any of the skills that you think is really um, that you use, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. So the first one really that jumps out at me is CAD, especially if you're doing product development, um, and not just. I think really developing good practices. And, you know, there's a good way to model something. There's also a bad way to model something. So. And one thing that was really ingrained in me early on was modeling your part as how you'd machine it. I mean, you know, starting kind of with more material and then, then whittling it down to, to your final part rather than adding things. So just developing good practices there. Um, so we use CAD. Um, I use Excel a lot. I mean, just more for a lot of organi organization, just you know, day to day stuff, or if I'm having to do calculations kind of having a working knowledge of how to use different formulas is, is always helpful. Um, and even a lot of the internal documents we put together, like the templates are Excel-based. So there are a lot of macros involved as well. So knowing how to just you know, troubleshoot them if something breaks down is always helpful. Um, so we've got CAD, Excel. Um, we also use FEA software. We use ANSYS, so FEA finite element analysis or and, those simulation softwares, that's, it's great if you have some exposure to that. Um, but really, I think also behind that is also having a good understanding of, you know, the, the mechanical principles. It's, you need to know the theory behind it. Like say, 
and I got a while back was putting together some essentially that something that was simulating a cantilever beam loading. And so knowing kind of that theory behind it helps you really to, to use the tool properly and, and efficiently. Um, i trying to think. We do also have various, I guess I'm, this question is kind of becoming like what software <laughs> I use, um, so I apologize, but um, you know, we have different data management programs as well. So just um, learning, knowing how to, to, to use all that um, effectively just is really helpful in, in my day-to-day -day job. Um, hopefully that helps answer. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. So the um, follow-up question from uh, Jaws of uh, CAD, I mean, you mentioned uh, using it um, consistently. And uh, uh, for someone who's not familiar with, uh, with CAD, how difficult is it to learn it? And, uh, um, and do you have any advice on, uh, and actually, no, he was wondering how you, how you got into it, into CAD. Yeah, so I, I first learned SOLIDWORKS at CASE um, in that series of design classes I was telling you guys about. And I'm gonna tell you, I, I was not great at it. Um, I never used it. I had a lot of classmates who actually had used CAD since they were in high school. Um, but it was just something that you, with time, you get used to it. And really once you learn how to use one, it's, it's pretty similar, like the skill transfer to different software platforms. Um, but really, I think when, when I really started you know, moving and grooving with CAD was when I applied it in my personal projects. There was just, I forget, I was trying, I, there was something I wanted to make just for a personal project. And I just went into SOLIDWORKS and started trying to model it. And anytime I didn't know how to do something, I just went on YouTube or Google and found a bunch of really helpful tutorials. Um, so I just, I started with something I really was interested in and, and through that learned a lot of skills. Um, and yeah, I think just giving it time. Um, I think knowing also there's a lot of stuff out there, you know, there's stuff that's also just being mindful of kind of the more kind of the better ways to do it. Um, and through that, if you have other classmates or mentors who have had experience with, with that kind of picking their brain to understand what, what's the best way to do something. Okay, th thank you, Amanda. Are you using any uh, coding uh, languages uh, today? And uh, do you, uh, is this something that you would, uh, that you think is uh, useful today uh, for an engineer to learn? Yeah, so in my day-to-day, -day, I, I don't do much coding. Um, I mean, in school, I, we learned MATLAB. And again, it was more, I think that what I really took out of that class was just how to think through the problem, how to, how to code something. Um, and so I, and that's essentially, it's more that thought process that I apply in my day-to-day -day job. But again, for, for what I do, we don't really do a lot of, a lot of coding. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, question from uh, George, what are some things you have learned on the biology side uh, of this career? And uh, did you take any classes for this or was it on uh, kind of from the on-the-job training? So I, so I took, so while I was a mechanical engineering student, I took a lot of my classes in the biomedical department. Um, it's what we called our tech electives. And so I got a lot of exposure to um, anatomy and physiology through those classes. Um, but really when it came to ortho, I, I learned a lot just being immersed in it in my internships and co-ops. Um, there are a lot of great videos that I would just watch and kind of get a feel for, for the surgery and where you know, those would be applied to. So it was, I think having that initial exposure really just helped me pick things up a lot faster by the time I started working uh, here. Okay. Uh, one of the characteristics of the most uh, successful uh, people, um, I would say engineers at uh, Medtronics. Ooh, that is a really good question. Um, I'd say having a deep technical expertise, um, knowing how to juggle a lot of different projects and priorities and being able to communicate up and down the, the chain. Um, yeah, I, I probably sound like a broken record, but really 
you know, those being, it's not just enough to be very technical, but really being a solid communicator and collaborator. We're, we're constantly working with teams. I mean, not just teams with other R&D engineers, but just different functions. Um, and I think also just really being efficient. We have some really you know, talented individuals here that know really how to efficiently use CAD and really generate a lot of content, concepts in a short amount of time. Um, so they're very prolific, um, you know, have a lot of patents um, and really made a lot of uh, technical contributions in our organization. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I'd say as some, some traits that are um, stand out and some of the successful folks around here. That's, uh, that's great. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, what is better thermal or design engineering or mechanical engineer? What is, sorry, what was the first part? What is better? Thermal. Thermal? Uh, yeah, or design engineering. Oh, um, in terms of better, I, I wouldn't know. I mean, is this more in like a plot, a pursuing position? position here in Medtronic or the medical device field or just, I guess, in, is there more context there? Uh, no, so we'll uh, ask uh, Heyman here who asked that question, if he can uh, uh, clarify. Um, we'll move to another question. So what is, uh, uh, I'm assuming like, you know, everyone, I'm sure you, uh, as an engineer, you've made uh, mistakes. Uh, how do you fix them and what do you learn from them? Yeah, so one example that comes to mind is I was, I mean, I was working on an instrument that had really tight tolerances, um, but I, I, I missed one of the tolerances. Um, so basically that, that instrument, and then this was, I didn't realize this until after the part was made. Um, so unfortunately we did have to scrap parts, um, but luckily we had it built into our timeline uh, enough time to actually go back and rework those parts. Um, so. There was that moment of, okay, I made a mistake, but what can I learn from it? And so for me, it was just making sure I, I really sat down with you know the rest of the team, did fairly thorough print reviews. Um, again, making sure the tolerances were right before um, going to the manufacturers. Um, so it was just taking, taking time, um, looking to other people to kind of review things and I think again, having buffer in our timeline really helped um, to, to kind of get us back on track and we we're still able to deliver that instrument in the end. Okay, great. Uh, would you say getting uh, a master's or graduate degree is uh, worth it? And would you go back to uh, getting one? Yeah, good question. So I guess, uh, so I, I just, as I mentioned, I just have a bachelor's I knew I didn't want to pursue a master's after getting my undergraduate degree. I, I was just itching to get out there and, and work. Um, so for, for me, at the time, um, I, I wanted to just, again, kind of dive into the industry where it's just faster paced and there's just um, really start working on something um, to help patients. Um, so, but fa fast forward three years in, um, I'm liking what I'm doing, but I'm always looking ahead, you know, what, what else is out there? Is there something I could go back to school to help me in my current job or what? So I've really been really interested in product design. And so I have kind of lately been looking at, you know, different, are there different programs out there that, um, that I can continue to really build my skills? Um, so still figuring that out, but I guess my advice would really be if, if you're not entirely sure what you want to do yet, maybe you know, spending a couple of years out in the industry, really seeing what it's like working on in a specific discipline um, and then taking a break or taking a pause there and assessing, you know, are there other programs out there that you feel, if you feel like you're not able to advance your skills where you currently are, it's there other, other ways, maybe there's school. Um, it just kind of depends on what you're looking for and I think what type of environment. Um, and what do you think you would be uh, doing um, 
if you didn't work for uh, Medtronic or in, uh, or in this field? So I've, I've worried, so I went to an arts high school, so I, I always grew up kind of really artsy, fartsy, like loved being creative, working with my hands. And so I think if I were to go back, I'd love to try and do something related to like industrial design, um, kind of more, you know, still hopefully be technical, but kind of be able to play more on my like arts background. Um, I like making arts and crafts, so just something, I don't know, that, that helped me, I guess, explore that. But honestly, there are times I'm still figuring out what I want to be when I grow up. Um, I love what I'm currently doing, um, but the, it just what it ends up you know leading me down to. Ooh, I, I have it opens up the door to so many other interests that I never considered or even kind of dived into. So I think just having that appetite to learn and, and grow um, is really just has kind of kept me going in, in my journey. Okay. Um... Let's go back to uh, the skills that you acquired or you learned um, while at uh, Medtronic. Uh, so Paul was wondering if there was, uh, what team skills, team working skills uh, did you learn while at uh, Medtronic, if, if any? Yeah, it's teamwork skills. Um, I, I'll kind of piggyback off of what I had said earlier about adapting your communication styles, depending on, you know, kind of the different folks you're working with in different groups or in, in different levels of the organization. Um, you know, if you're, you're talking to kind of more someone who's in R&D or at your level, you know, it's, it's great to get into the technical, the nitty gritty, but then as you, as you, um, you know, communicate out, you know, to the leadership team that usually they want to kind of know more high level um, where you're going with things. So really say communication is, is something I'm, I'm constantly improving, learning and adapting. Um, and I think understanding also what makes people click or, you know, people are motivated, motivated by different ways. Um, you know, I, and I think managing expectations as well. Um, you know, just cause I have one work style doesn't mean someone else is going to operate that way as well. So I think really understanding how people work, how people communicate, how they're motivated, um, has really helped me learn how to effectively work with different people, you know, being empathetic and understanding those different personalities and, and strengths and backgrounds. Great. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, we have a few minutes to go, so we'll take uh, just a few more questions and uh, then we'll wrap up. Um, one question or follow-up question uh, has to do with the MATLAB. I think you mentioned using it. Um, and I was, uh, so I think that question on the, on the YouTube chat where someone was wondering if uh, you're doing today, if you do a lot of uh, math, if you use a lot of math uh, in your work or is it, uh, or use MATLAB for that? Yeah, so I don't really use MATLAB, uh, but in terms of math, I, I use it regularly. I mean, like I mentioned with, when we're coming up with prints, you have to look at tolerances. Um, so it's more simple arithmetic, um, but um, there's, you know, we're using also sometimes trig as well. If there's, you know, we're looking at certain geometries, figuring out different angles, different values there. Um, so I'm not, I'm not like deriving it, you know, any fancy proofs or anything, but it's just more kind of basic arithmetic skills. Um, nothing, nothing too fancy. Um, but yeah, I, I don't use MATLAB. I, if okay. I'm doing more advanced calculations, I'll probably use Excel or something like Wolfram Alpha. Okay, um, I think uh, let me just check and see if we have any more questions. So you're getting a lot of thank you on the YouTube chat, by the way, Amanda, so people really um, who are listening and they really appreciate all your um, answers. Uh, found it very, very helpful, so thank you. Um, I think the last question was um, in terms of uh, a career development program, is there something uh, that um, 
Medtronic provides today for early uh, engineers? Yeah, so I think they're I'm trying to think. So we have a pretty good internship program, but I'm, so for early development, um, I know there are some rotational programs, but I think again, that might be more on the business side. There's like, I think a leadership development rotation program. Mm -hmm. But I think those are for folks who either, again, sorry, I don't know all the details, but um, I think for folks who maybe have gotten their MBA or just looking to try out different divisions. Um, a little more experience. Yeah, so that's more experience, but um, in terms of early, we don't have, at least, and to my knowledge in Spine, we don't really have a rotational program. Uh, I mean, sure our, the, oh, sorry? No, I was gonna say, I'm sure the, uh, uh, if there is, uh, there would be uh, some additional uh, information on, uh, on programs on probably the websites, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in terms of early development, there's, um, I mean, lots of, we have what we call employee resource groups, mm -hmm. um, kind of like the extracurriculars on, a college campus, if you will. We have a young professional group, we have a SWE group, et cetera. And through that, there's usually a lot of opportunities for mentorship, to engage with, with people in different divisions or levels. Um, trying to think. Yeah, there's just, there are a lot of resources. I mean, we have different um, trainings or just internal professional development days. Um, it's, it's kind of a mix. It just kind of depends what group you're in. And again, if there's something you're interested in or you feel like you need more support in, I'd say management's usually open to, to helping you, you know, connect you with the right people and, and resources. Okay, thank you. Um, one last question and I think we'll then uh, wrap up. Um, if there is any last thing that you wanna, I guess, share uh, with the audience today, uh, as far as advice, anything that you think would be helpful for them to, to know? Um, so any last minute uh, uh, thoughts or advice? Um, so I'd say you don't have to have everything figured out. <laughs> um, I, I started with something I was interested in. I mean, I, I watched the movie and I thought, hey, my animal prosthetics, that, that sounds neat. You know, what, what can I do there? And so that was just the seed that was planted. So I went from there and kind of along the way as I just was exposed to more and more, I, I mean, you're, 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 get, you're gathering data essentially and figuring out what you like, what you don't like. Um, I mean, you change as well. So I'd say be, just be open. Um, I think I, I'm here where I am today because of a lot of just jumping into different opportunities. Um, there are, there are internships that I, I just, I reached out to folks about. I mean, like I said, the, those cold calls, those LinkedIn requests, it just, that's that's how I got there. Um, and I, I was really lucky at, at Case to you know really meet some great people and mentors. Um, and so just learning what's out there um, is, is always a great start um, and giving yourself that time and space to explore um, and you try it, it's not your thing, then you can move on and check out what's next. Um, so I just, I never was the one to have everything mapped out. Um, I just wanted to keep learning and growing and doing something that was fulfilling to me. And so in this case, right now it's um, developing spinal products to help patients. Um, that's, that's why I wake up and go to work every day. So. Right, thank you. So we're gonna uh, wrap up now. It's um, at the top of uh, uh, the hour. Um, thank you all very much for participating in today's webinar. Uh, I hope you uh, all enjoyed it and found it uh, helpful. Uh, this webinar as uh, usual uh, has been recorded and will be available online at uh, www.asane.org uh, in a few days. And uh, lastly, very important, uh, in a few minutes, we will uh, send you a short survey. Uh, so please be so kind and give us your feedback so we can bring you uh, speakers and topics that are the mo most of interest to you in the future. 
Um, thank you again and see you soon on our next webinar in November. Uh, we'll have uh, Shell uh, on the 18th of November, a um, guest speaker from, uh, from Shell. So thank you again uh, all. Thank you again, uh, Amanda. Really great to, uh, to have you uh, here with us today. Um, found it very, very helpful. Thank you so much and uh, take care everyone. Bye.